How to enjoy food despite living a gluten-free life. Do you want to know the benefits of living a gluten-free lifestyle? Maybe your doctor said that you want to do try that or you have heard about, you know, trying anti-inflammatory diet because you're having all these stomach problems. But it is really hard to figure out how to eat without having gluten in your diet, especially the type of food that we eat. So many people struggle with it. And today we have a special program where our guest is going to share why to live a gluten-free lifestyle, how to start if you're interested, and what kind of benefits you'd be able to gain. If you are interested in learning about it, stay tuned. You have a treat coming. And welcome to Happy and Healthy Mind. My name is Dr. Rosina, and I'm a psychiatrist, author, speaker, and an employee wellness consultant. Over the last 20 years, I've been serving as a medical doctor, specializing in psychiatry, a best-selling author, and a transformative speaker. I believe that our mind is the software that runs the hardware of both our brain and our body. Therefore, I share practical tips for mental fitness so you could live your best life without burnout and unnecessary suffering. Please consult your healthcare provider for any specific medical advice. But if you like the content here, please join us in our mission of eradicating preventable suffering and suicides by liking, subscribing, and sharing so more people can live their best life with health and happiness. And I am so excited to welcome Jen Fury as a, as a guest today. She's an author and a wellness coach who specializes in mindset, gluten-free lifestyle, and value of spiritual connection. She's a wife and mother of three adult children. Her books include a children's book, Heaven Sent, and All the Parts of Me, One Woman's Detour into Fear and Trip Back to Love. Her memoir chronicles her life of love and pain and her ultimate healing and great joy. So let's learn from her. Thank you for joining, Jen. Thank you for having me. What a wonderful introduction. We are blessed to have you today. So tell us, like- um, tell us, how did this topic become important for you? Tell us uh, your story before and after story. Absolutely. I would love to share that because I think so many people um, have suffered with their diet and um, don't know where to start. So for me, um, the pain and discomfort in my stomach started about the age of eight. And um, I never really got to the bottom of it. My mother would take me to doctors, but whatever I ate would upset my stomach greatly. And it would happen right after the meal, I mean, immediately. And it took me to um, some very disturbing times growing up. It was, it disconnected me from my family. I spent a lot of time ill. Um, I never equated my food though with all the other things I suffered from, which would have been um, headaches, joint pain, and largely um, feeling very clouded. I never had, uh, uh, could never learn very easily. Um, Learning was very difficult for me. Um, I tried extremely hard to get good grades, but it was with great effort. And that that suffering continued for decades. And it wasn't until the age of 35 that I found out that I had celiac disease. So uh, that was pretty tumultuous. (laughs) That was horrible. I had um, three children at the time. I was married, three children. We moved to Georgia. I'm a New Yorker. And um, as many of the world knows, New Yorkers love their pizza and their food and great bagels. And all of that contains gluten. Mm-hmm. So but before we go on, like, you know, for people who don't know what celiac disease is, can you t- describe what, what it means? Absolutely. So it's an autoimmune disease. And basically, your body cannot digest um, gluten, which is wheat, rye, and barley, the protein of those um, grains. And so the body turns on itself. So the intestines start to eat away and um, causes a great many uh, ailments. And it's ironic that many, if you speak to one person, two people together might not even have anything similar. I have a friend who never had a stomach ache and she had celiac disease, but she had horrible joint pain, many surgeries in her wrists and fingers and hands. Yeah. Um, And people may be wondering why I'm bringing an expert on gluten-free living on a mental health channel. 
And so um, there is also this association of what you eat affects your mood. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So, so having having problem with digestion and gut is considered second brain, and so there is a gut and brain connection, and what we eat also affects our brain. And therefore, I think it's important for people to learn about how to eat better for better for happier and healthier life. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, also too, which I find for myself, but anybody I speak with, if, you know, if you're really unhappy and you're constantly feel poorly, it isn't a wonder why you get depressed and many other variety of other things. So if you're not feeling well, you, and you're not enjoying your food, your food's fighting your body, your relationships suffer, your work and experience suffers. And so I noticed that too. So once you start to heal the body and the gut, things start to fall in place because you're feeling better. It's an energy thing. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah, so yeah. So when I'm treating people with depression and anxiety, I look at gut problems because many times they are contributing to their mental health issues. Absolutely. But the thing is, too, Doc, is that not everybody has to have celiac disease in order right. to adapt a gluten-free lifestyle. See, if... if if you're finding that you're feeling inflamed or you have headaches or chronic ailments, I can guarantee the doctor's going to ask you, hey, have you ever tried to take gluten out of your life? And it really does happen for people that they start down that road and they don't have a diagnosis and they're feeling better. Um, I don't ever tell people start a gluten-free lifestyle to lose weight because, well, I have gluten-free cookies in my pantry and donuts. So if, <laughs> if that's what you're trying to do, I'd say no, don't start there. Um, but I would definitely, if you're having chronic problems and you're feeling cloudy and like you said, if you have anxiety, anxiety, um, many, many triggers are found in our food and additives and things like that. So that's a great step is what we're putting in our body to heal these things in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of research has been done in terms of an underlying cause for many of the both physical and mental illnesses. Yeah. And one of the one of the common denominating factor between depression, heart disease, diabetes and other chronic problem is inflammation. And, and there are many causes of inflammation and one of the biggest cause of inflammation is our food. So when you are going gluten-free, not only you are taking away gluten, which may be causing the problem, but you're also decreasing the inflammatory component of the food. So when you eating anti-inflammatory food, you would decrease the body's inflammation and may decrease not just, not just your gut health, but your brain health, your heart health, and other chronic problems too. 100% couldn't agree more. And I probably would be the walking example for what you just said. When I found out at 35, I went gluten-free. My, my three children also have celiac disease. So my household is 100% gluten-free. And for years I felt good, but I still wasn't feeling great. I had reduced headaches. I had reduced sinus problems. I felt clearer in my thoughts, but I still had a great deal of pain in the body. So when I went gluten-free, this was great. It saved my children's lives. They were completely different people. But I, for me, I had arthritis. I have arthritis. I was in a car accident when I was 18. So I have a lot of degenerative arthritis from basically head to toe from my feet too. And it was in time that I realized I had to continue my journey with food and adapt a better um, anti-inflammatory diet for me. My rest of my family didn't necessarily need to do what I was doing, but for me. And that took me to the next level of healing where I didn't need medication and I didn't need any anything else other than my diet. Mm -hmm. And my anxiety um, and my depression um, was greatly affected to the positive, really Wonderful. was. Wonderful. So, so before you were describing all these body problems and mind problems, and then once you made the change, um, your life improved. What, what steps did you take? Can you share some practical tips that our audience can benefit from? I would love to. Um, when we started 19 years ago, we didn't have the benefits that you all have today. 
So I took to researching and we didn't really have a lot of internet. We didn't have Google at the time. <laughs> I think we were still asking Jeeves questions, but I, I scoured the planet for information about what flowers to use. Anything that I could make things at my home for my children and for myself as normal to our normal as possible. So the things that we were making. So my suggestion right off the bat to anybody trying to adapt a gluten-free lifestyle, make changes in their life is to first start with the things that you love. So if you love bread, okay, then let's get cracking on some really good bread recipes and get closest to what it is that you desire. Because once you start being happy about what you're eating, then you're not really thinking about the things that you're not having because you're having a great piece of bread. You're having the things that you know, I don't know, maybe satisfy your desires when you eat, you know? Some people like crunchy things, you know? I need bread. <laughs> I need bread. So that was what I first started with was the things that were really important in mine and my children's life. Because then I felt, you know, I can figure out a soup, but these are the things, the staples. So that's my first recommendation when we're going gluten free, because um, everything that is like, I, I try to say everything that is natural is gluten free. Well, clearly not grains, people, but fruits and vegetables, gluten free. But it's what you're putting on them is that you have to worry about. So hidden things like any kind of soup mixes in a package or sauces that you put on might have gluten on the label. Nowadays, we read the label and we see the allergens. That's fantastic. But also too, little hidden things might have gluten in them. So you just have to read those labels carefully. And um, there are certain things also for inflammation too that I try to avoid. That's not in the gluten-free diet, but that is in the um, inflammatory thing. So labels, labels, labels. That's when you're reading. But anything natural, anything that you're making, if you stick to your gluten-free flours and your vegetables and fruits, that's the that's a second step right there. You know how many menus you can create with that alone? Um, and I have taken it a step further for me and my family and beyond our go-to staples. And then I just started experimenting with things and being kind to myself is a nice way of saying it. Um, don't look on Pinterest. I didn't look on Pinterest. That was a thing. I didn't want to judge myself. I made a cake and we were happy that it tasted good. It was, might not have been Pinterest worthy, but not judging myself. That was a big step for me. So if I made a cake for someone's birthday that tasted just like a vanilla cake with a chocolate icing, everybody was happy. I didn't judge myself that it didn't look like the gluten version. That was a big thing for me. I had to release that judgment on myself. And the more we did that, we just started to really enjoy our food and get excited about it. We experimented with everything. The kids got involved in it, you know, because if you have a child who has to be gluten free, how sad is it they can't be in the birthday party with somebody or have a pizza party? And um, I will give a parent tip if I will, if I could right now. Please, please. Because, yeah, it is very hard to, so hard. Uh, especially like, you know, like you said, you know, uh, kids go to a, a pizza party. Like they can't eat the pizza because no. it has the gluten in it. So and, then they're kind of separated and they feel isolated or, you know, they feel like, you know, something wrong with them. Wrong with them. Absolutely. So, yeah, right. give us a parent tip. So some parent tips for that. Now, I don't know about anywhere else in the country, but for my kids growing up, and I had to do this from pre-K all the way through college. So um, one of the things in Georgia was we seemed to have celebrate everybody's birthday every day there was something. So guys, what I did was I did, I perfected until I got a great basic vanilla cupcake recipe and I put them in the freezer and I would, and then I would always have, I know this sounds crazy, but I would always have an icing in the refrigerator. I had three kids going through school, you know, that's many cupcakes. Then what I did was on pizza night, I'd make an extra batch of pizza dough and I would individually freeze individual slices of pizza. And when my son came home from kindergarten, that little chubby cheek little kid and said to me, mommy, everybody wanted my brownie today. That made my day because he didn't feel different. He felt special. And um, that's what we want for our kids to always feel special and included when they're in a group of 
at school. I mean, and I didn't want my kids to feel different. So I did that. So the okay. question, so did you used to cook a lot at home even before you yes. went gluten free? Yeah. Because so that's probably, what I'm thinking. Like, you know, for some mm -hmm. people who don't cook a lot of food, it may be harder for them to start cooking everything at home. Right. And it, and that definitely is. I'm so glad you brought that up. I would 100% say I'm a home chef, a home baker, not <laughs> yeah. at all, not at all. I mean, I thought baking, like, I didn't know, you know, round the cup. My, my, my sister said, Jen, it's a science. What are you doing? So I had to learn how to be a baker. But when you desire, when you have a great desire for something, you will do. And especially when it's the kids, you're really going to do it. But now we're so blessed. You could go to the grocery store and on the shelves, you can pick up boop, chocolate cake, brownies. So you can do that now. But as a parent, I say, if you don't want to make a creation of your own, pull that off the shelf, make it and put it in the freezer for those kids. That will make them so happy that they never have to be missing out on um, treats at school. Yeah. It's a big thing. Yeah. And like, you know, before we started talking, we were saying that our mindset has so much to do with how we feel about the changes in our lifestyle. And so how did you overcome, like, you know, you're talking about having the positive mindset and focusing on yeah. what we are able to eat rather than what we are not able to eat. Right. Um, do you have any tips in terms of how to reset your mindset so that you actually enjoy good food rather than feeling that I'm not able to eat the food that I desire? Absolutely. Um, at first, uh, my recommendation to anyone I speak with is be honest, like cry. The first thing I did was cry. I just like locked myself in my bedroom so my kids wouldn't see how daunting this was going to be. And I cried. And then I said, okay, I love food. This is a passion of mine. This has been my family, my heritage, Italian. I love food. I want to have that in my life. So the only thing, there's one thing I haven't been able to eat yet in 19 years. It's a good quality scuyadel. It's an Italian pastry. But everything else I have found out pre-made or made myself. And now it became an exciting thing for our family to search for these things. So when there's a block, that's the thing I suggest. Um, if you can't make, I don't know, fresh pizza or, um, or a tortellini or something at home, then find it and make it a family thing. Yeah. Oh, um, and um, Ellen's a vegan. I see her saying that there are so many vegan dishes that we do as well as a family because I have one child that doesn't do dairy and is very um, strict with her meat intake. And we enjoy that too. Like we make her her dishes when we get together now as a family and we enjoy like our vegan lasagna with our cashew cheese. And we, we have fun with that because we want, I think eating if I'm not mistaken, most people enjoy it as a celebration, as camaraderie, as friendship and, you know, sharing more than the food, but the food is important. Yeah. Yeah. Food brings people together. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. eat and celebration. We eat uh, to enjoy, but right. we also, it's a primary need for the body to function. Right. right. If you don't eat, then you are not able to function. Your brain needs those calories. Your body needs uh, those calories. But eating healthier mm -hmm. would allow your mind and your body to function at its best. Absolutely. So you want to you want to meet both the purposes don't just kind of put whatever comes in your body but eat what is a pro what is going to nourish your body what is going to help your body to feel better while also helping you feel good in your mouth and feel good socially right i do agree with that completely i've always had a relationship with food at times it might not have been a good relationship <laughs> but now in my wiser years. Um, I really still enjoy food, but I understand its purpose. And I don't deny myself. If I want a piece of cake, I have it. I just don't eat the whole cake. And well, obviously it's always going to be gluten-free. And then I, for the rest of the week, I don't maybe eat a lot of sugar. So I never deprive myself of my desires that I want to eat, you know? So we are talking about sugar. We're talking about vegan diet. We're talking about anti-inflammatory and gluten-free. So it may be confusing for some people. Can you just kind of take a minute to clarify what is the difference between 
you know, a vegan diet and a gluten-free diet and an anti-inflammatory diet. Sure. So a gluten-free diet is only your grains. People who eat a gluten-free diet, many times they, they add in, so they're not considered a vegan. So we have a guest on here who said that she's a vegan. That means she does not eat any dairy or meat products. And so with my, my family, one of my family members adapts, you know, more of a vegan lifestyle. So when she comes over, we're always going to be gluten free, but then we're going to remove any of the animal products for her. So you don't necessarily so vegan vegan means no animal products. Right. They don't eat any any um animal products, nothing, even dairy, you know, so from from an, from animals and um and it does help though you mentioned um inflammation. Many people adapt a vegan lifestyle for inflammation as well. Right. So and many and, people are vegan and gluten free. Okay. So, it's like, so then when you go to gluten free, number one, what is gluten? So gluten again is the protein found in wheat, rye, and barley. But let me add, oats that are cross contaminated in America, so like they'll put a crop down of wheat and then they'll pull the wheat and then they'll put the oats down. So we don't eat oats that don't say gluten free and have a dedicated crop. Okay. But there are very many people who have celiac disease who can't eat oats as well. It irritates them just like as, as, as if they had gluten. Mm -hmm. So it's always going to be the, the um, protein found in those grains mm -hmm. that the body can't digest. So it goes beyond just having celiac disease. Many people are just very irritated. So you hear the words um, gluten intolerant. Or and even some people um, are they they just say blanketly I have a gluten allergy because they just don't feel like explaining it. A lot of people told me that they just it's easier for me just to say I have a gluten allergy and I get it that the gluten in their body causes them pain or inflammation and mm -hmm. that's so that's the difference between and so inflammatory diets like you said to clarify not everybody who is eating an anti-inflammatory diet needs it by a doctor's recommendation, they're choosing that to reduce the inflammation in their body for whatever the wellness is, stomach aches, headaches, um, clarity, maybe even to reduce their inflammation from arthritis. Some people have arthritis and adhere to an anti-inflammatory diet. And one of the things in an anti-inflammatory diet is gluten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also in an anti-inflammatory diet is sugar. And for the people out there who are vegan is dairy. So the anti-inflammatory diet has a lot of no-nos that they say, if you're going to follow this, you're going to be removing those things, gluten and sugar and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so people uh, experiment first with one thing. Yeah. And then they keep going down the line. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's one of the tips that we give to our patients. Like, you know, don't go right. all the way right away, you know, do one thing at a time. So then you get kind of get used to become comfortable with one thing and then try another thing um or some people go all the way to the other side they say okay let's stop everything and then right. start introducing one thing at a time back and see um which which food is causing the problem so you can go both ways right um, i think it depends on your personality too are you the type of person say i'm gonna just do it all and then some people say, I have to take a little, put one toe in the water at a time. You know, it depends on um, yeah. how you do. Wonderful. So do you have any further tips before we wrap up our program? Well, further tips for being gluten-free. Yeah. Um, for being gluten-free? No, I was just saying, like, you know, what if what if people don't uh, don't stop eating gluten, even if they find that it is irritating their stomach? What kind okay. of problems would they have? Yeah. And so that is something that I try to, you know, it, it is kind of a, a, a frightening thing. If you have celiac disease and you are not adhering to a gluten free diet, the chances of you having stomach cancer are very much higher almost i think the last research i did was 40 percent higher than anybody else and to me that's just um unnecessary when we can there's so many things available right now that we can really tweak but really you're wearing your body down you're constantly putting stress on your body that doesn't need to be there and personally we talked about joy you're not living your best joyful life if you're constantly in pain or 
depressed or have anxiety and don't know really how to stop it, but you are told that if you tried the gluten-free diet, you could get a handle on it. So I recommend that if your doctor is telling you and advising you to give this a try or that it's something that you have a gut feeling, like you just, gosh, I keep hearing this over and over and I just have this gut feeling I should try it, then please try it because you know your inner guidance system is telling you this might be the thing for you. Wonderful, wonderful. So thank you so much for bringing us this great information. If people want to learn more, how can they learn more about you or your programs? Great. Well, my name is Jen Fiore. So my website's www.jenfiore.com. Um, and if not on Facebook, I'm Jen Fiore, Do Life Inspired or Instagram. It's a funny name. It's gluten-free since 03. Since <laughs> All right. So you're trying to find a line. Right. <laughs> We've been gluten-free since 2003. And I also have a YouTube channel where I put up a lot of videos as well. Um, and that's called... Um, it's gluten-free and me. Wonderful. Yeah, so I encourage people to visit her site and learn more if you're interested. She has more than gluten-free information. She's a health coach, so you learn more. And she's very graciously shared a free gift with us. So she's going to share tips for how to begin a gluten-free lifestyle, if that's what you're deciding. And you would be able to find uh, that resource on our website, happyandhealthymind.com. And there's this big button called resources. If you click, you'll get all the resources from our guests and this program. And if you would like us to send you text for reminders for future programs or share the resources and you're in US, you can also text the word joyful to number 38470 and we'd be happy to send you reminders and resources. Let me kind of wrap up and leave you with this message. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Are you going to choose ways to help you feel better and live your best life? Or are you going to let go of that opportunity and allow the environment to take, take over? Take the opportunity, make the best decision, live your best life with health and happiness. Thank you, Jen, for joining us today. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. Till next time, Dr. Rosina.